So for each box, we need an X position. I'm going to shorten that to X P O S. And I'm going to set that to zero for now. It'll change for each box. And same thing for the Y, set that equal to zero for now. And then as we use our pixel editor, we're going to have a different color each time we want to add a color to the screen. So we're going to create a variable called current color, and we'll set it equal to null for now. So null is just a placeholder. That means they don't have a color in there yet. And all of our pixels are going to be held inside of this list called grid. So we're going to have a grid, and we're going to set it equal to the left square bracket and the right square bracket right next to it. That just means that we're going to make a list, but there's nothing inside of it yet. So we're going to create some functions. So Functions in code just means you're going to give your computer some instructions to follow. So to do that, we're going to type out the word function. It'll turn blue when you spell it right. And then we're going to call it a column. So our grid is going to be made up of 16 rows and 16 columns. This column function will take care of making each column one at a time, and we'll create a row function to deal with our rows. So in order to go through each row one at a time, we're going to put in parentheses the letter i. So this letter i is going to change its value depending on which column we're dealing with. So we'll go from column number one, column number two, column number three, four, five, all the way up to 16. And that i will change for us. So now we're going to put in our two curly brackets so that we know the beginning of the end of this set of instructions is. So we're going to put the left curly bracket, press enter twice so you skip a line, and then enter your right curly bracket. That way you already know where your beginning and your end of your function is. Then we'll click in between where we left that empty space and we'll add in our code for the columns. So for each column, we have to decide where the Y position of each pixel is going to be. So we're gonna take that Y position variable that we made earlier and we're gonna set it to the number 25 plus, and inside of parentheses, the size that we chose earlier times i. So to break this down, each y position is going to start out at the number 25. So from the top of the screen, you'll count 25 pixels and you'll start there. And then you're going to add the size that we chose, which was 40. If you go back up to your code, you'll see our size was 40. And you're going to multiply it by whatever number i is. So for column number one, i is going to equal 1. So the Y position is going to be 25 plus 40 times one. So our first box is going to be at Y position 65. Then once we get to the second pixel in our column, it's going to be 25 plus size times two, because now we're in I equals two. So it'll be 25 plus 80, which is 105. Then we're gonna go all the way down until we have 16 inside of our column. And for each pixel in the column, there's going to be 16 making up that row. So underneath this, we're going to use the repeat function and repeat a function that we're going to create later called row 16 times. So repeat parentheses row comma 16 and close parentheses. And on the next line, we're going to start building our pixels. So I'm going to create a pixel variable and we're going to use the same function as we use for our buttons. We're going to use the box command parentheses, and we're just going to fill in our info for the variables that we made for the positions. So again, we're going to use the x position variable, and then the y position variable. And then we have to add in the width and height of our pixels. So we'll put in the size as the width, and then the size again for the height. So it's going to be a square. So 40 by 40. And then we'll fill in the same info as before. We're going to make the background clear this time. And then the outline black. And go ahead and press enter. And we're going to set this up again with a future function where whenever you tap on your pixel, so pixel.tap, you're going to use the function called change color. On the next line, we have to make sure that each of the pixels we have on the screen, we're going to add to our list called grid. So you'll type in the word grid, 
and put in dot push. So push just means to add something to your list. So to our grid list, we're going to push in parentheses each pixel. So every time you make a pixel on the screen, you're going to add it to your grid list. And then underneath this, we're going to, so outside and outside of your curly brackets, we're done with our column function. We're going to repeat this column 16 times. We'll get a column of 16 pixels. Now we're going to set up our row function at the same time. It's going to be really similar. Go ahead and set up your function row. And again, um, we already used the i, so we're going to use j this time. Now j is going to count your number of rows. So row number one, and then row number two, and then row number three. Same thing, we're going to put our left curly bracket, press enter twice, and then hit the right curly bracket. So you see where the beginning and end of your row function is. And then in between, instead of choosing the y position of each pixel, we're going to calculate the x position of each pixel. So our x position variable is xpos equals, and since it's a square, we're going to use the exact same code as from our y position of our column. We're going to take 25, and we're going to add inside of parentheses the size times, but this time we're going to use the j because we're using j for our rows. So again, row 1 is going to have j equals 1, so the x position will be 25 plus the size was 40 times 1. So the x position, so the x position is going to be 25 plus 40 at 65. And then row 2 will be at 25 plus 40 times 2, so it'll be 105. And so on and so forth. And for each row, we have to do the same thing as for our columns. We're going to make a pixel. And we're going to set it equal to the box command again. And the same parameters apply, so x position, y position, and then we're going to put in the width and height, which is the size and the size. And then again, we want them to be clear inside and a black outline. And again, the same thing, we're just going to use the same code as from the column. Each pixel, whenever you tap, is going to use the change color function. And you'll add that pixel to the grid. So grid.push and then pixel. 